Hey everybody, this is Perch. The comic storytelling has changed quite a bit uh, over the years, and depending on, you know, oftentimes where you came into comics is kind of the way comics should be for you. If you came in in the 70s, uh, kind of Silver Age, you, you expect more kind of uh, exposition, more thought bubbles. If you came in in the 90s, you probably expect a bit more action. You, I mean, there's just, there's different moments in which you came into comics, and, and definitely there's a lot of generalities that you can have. But I've got two two mails, so I'm going to do two mails in one video because they both kind of uh, overlap a little bit. So the first one, uh, it goes like this. It goes, uh, hey, Perch, uh, I've been reading some Silver Age trades lately, and I always read the whole page. But pretty consistently, the little bubbles of exposition seem completely pointless. It'll be like, here's a page of Hal Jordan flying over the Grand Canyon with a text bubble that reads, the Green Lantern soars toward his destination above the Grand Canyon. I don't really get this aspect of the Silver Age. Does one really need to read these text bubbles at all? Well, I, I mean, that's a bit of an extreme example. But, uh, the, yeah, I mean, it, depending on the writer of who is coming into the comic and, and uh, how, how it was being done, um, the exposition blocks, the kind of narration, would either be very helpful or, you know, largely pointless. And, and sometimes the artist would get the notes and the lettering would all be extremely literal. Like, you know, Superman would take, or Clark Kent would take off his glasses and the exposition bubble would say, Clark Kent takes off his glasses. And it's, it's just that that was a style of how things were, were done at the time. However, that said, if you look at some of the old uh, Superman books and other things, you would get, um, you'd, you'd get a different kind of flavor. You'd get, um, kind of these these exposition button uh, dialogue things, it, they basically be telling massive parts of the plot. And then the art would kind of just kind of struggle to keep keep up. So it'd be like Superman removes his hat and tie and his glasses and changes into his costume. He's vulnerable to red kryptonite, so he's gotta get out of there fast. And you see like a, a picture of Superman looking worried. <laughs> and you're like, okay, well now this is more like a novel. So anyway, there's just been a lot of changes in styles. If I'm looking at modern comics um, and and I, I know this is just my personal preference, but the thing I, I despise about the exposition bubbles is when they kind of break the fourth wall jokey style uh, bubbles, where it's like, uh, here comes Hawkeye, the one you love the best, the sarcastic one, the one that doesn't have her life quite together, LOL. And it's like, okay, what? <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a you know, third grade girl, I don't need that kind of exposition, but, but maybe third grade girls do. And that's, that's what they're trying to go for. I, I don't know. But anyway, there's been a lot of, if you look at comics in the long picture, you'll see quite a bit of, of range where that's concerned. Uh, the other thing that, that has largely, you know, just gone away is the thought bubble. They don't have characters like what, what are they thinking? Well, they'll tell you and well, they'll just tell you, you know, usually in a mountain of text. And this is this is definitely kind of a, a bend of special. He tried to kind of bring it back during uh, Mighty Avengers, where he he launched that series. And I don't know if you ever remember, it had um, like the first issue had Tony Stark and uh, Carol Danvers trying to figure out the team, and they're going to go attack the Mole Man, and there's going to be an Ultron kind of thing going on. And you basically, you have this. You know, if if you think uh, kind of Bendis dialogue talking is annoying. Imagine when it's talking and thinking, because he'll have like, he'll have like Tony say something and they'll, he'll have him think right after like, well, you're very attractive, girl. Did I just say that out loud? Did he just say that out loud? Oh, uh, thank you, Tony. Don't stammer. Don't stammer. Like the, like that's the, it's like, oh my God, this is awful. Uh, but anyway, times change and, uh, I, I'll take the, uh, I'll take the exposition, uh, dialogue, even if it's, uh, Al Jordan is flying over the Green Lantern, or Green Lantern, uh, the Grand Canyon. Even if it's that, I'll take it over uh, some of the other dialogue that's gone on. But let's get to this, this other mail, which is related, and this goes uh, like this. It goes, hello, Perch. I've realized that there are different ways one can read comics. Well, Marvel has an entire comic for you on how to read their comics, which uh, it's, uh, it's out there. It's, uh, it's something. Uh, I've heard it said that you should look at the art first and then read the words to get the full effect of a story. I find this helps, especially with older comics that tend to be wordier. For example, I love Roger Stern's Spider-Man. However, his writing can sometimes take away from the art rather than complement it. What's your advice for reading a comic for while it's worth? Well, see, this does go along with the previous, uh, you know, the previous topic. So if I, you know, for me, 
I do exactly kind of what you stated there. I, you know, look at the art, kind of take it in, look at some nuance, then read the panels. And in some cases, the way the dialogue is, is done, the way the, the text bubbles or the way it's formulated around uh, the, the image or, or the page, I think you can, I, I, I don't know, I, I think there, there's, it's not a hard and fast rule. Sometimes really great lettering, really great comic production, the text actually feels like part of the art. It's, it's not just sandwiched in there, it actually feels very natural to the page. And I think when a creator can pull that off and a company can pull that off, then they, they work really well. You, you look at some of the, the page, some of the art, you read the text, your eye kind of naturally travels into a direction. And I think then, you know, you get kind of a true kind of marriage experience of the two. But not a lot of comics do that. It felt like there was a, a time period, I don't know, early 2000s, where people got really good at that. And then, then it, you know, there was a nice blend between some exposition, a little bit of thinking, thought bubbles, a little bit of speech bubbles, art, really thoughtful placement of where things were going. Um, I, I've heard artists talk about how there was a nice kind of thumbnail of the page drawn up and then handed over to the writer so you could kind of think about how it was going to be lettered and worded. So you could, anyway, just, so it was, it was a more uh, connected experience. Today, uh, you know, the words, first of all, there's just too many, like brevity is, is out the window. And so it's, it's kind of a struggle for the artist to like draw these really detailed pages. And I'm convinced, uh, that it is, you know, there's a number of things that are going on, but I am convinced that for a lot of artists, uh, they, they, they're doing less in the backgrounds and less detail work because they know big portions of the panel are going to be completely covered up with, with words. And so I think you, you see people go like, ah, I don't know. I mean, and oftentimes you're seeing lettering that covers up part of the character or, I mean, just, just really obnoxious stuff. I, it's, uh, <laughs> this, you see it more and more in comics and it's, it's disappointing. Uh, but in general, I think reading the comics, how you, how you approach it, you know, there's a lot of different styles there. And there's also people who will wait until an arc is completed in order to, kind of read it all or you know there's there's lots of different ways that it can be done and i i to me though i think you look at the especially now you look at the art you get a sense of what's going on you read the text bubbles now if you do that you're going to get a quicker read the comic's going to go by faster but i'm curious what people think i'm curious uh, what people in the comments will say for on, on all these topics first expo uh, exposition dialogue Useful, not useful, too literal. You know what this person is talking about? How, what era of comics do you like where it was easiest to read? You thought that the, the whole thing worked well together. When was it, when was it good for you? Is today good? Are there different times? Like maybe, you know, you like the silver age and you like like the 2000 to 2010 age. Those are two very, very different styles of comic uh, creation. Do you like uh, each one for different reasons? What what works and what doesn't work? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Um, I, I think uh, reading the comic is is an untalked about, certainly not going to be the most popular video, but uh, I don't know, I find kind of cool. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you very much for the mail, and thanks for listening.